Wow, the launch control canceled out. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a review of my Ram T-Rex, and in this first part, you guys will notice I'm overlaying some footage of the truck, and that's so you guys can actually see what the color really looks like, because this camera, for some reason, can't pick up the color. It makes it look mint, when in reality, it's just not mint, and you guys will see that with this. But anyways, with all that being said, let's just get straight into the review. So under the hood, we have a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 702 horsepower and then 650 pound feet of torque. Now it's rated for 10 around town and then 14 on the highway. I get like eight miles per gallon combined. So yeah, it is what it is. Now let's go with the front end of the truck. So first off, we've got the venting there in the center with all of the marker lights. And then we've got the fake venting here on the side with the logos and badges and all that fun stuff. It looks cool though. Full projector bulbs with the LED lights above and below. And then we've got the LED fog lights. Parking sensors are integrated into this bumper. And then notice they've got the dark coloration on the skid plate. And then there's a camera right there. And then the Ram logo is actually hollow to help out with airflow. So pretty cool that you have that whole system. And they've got tow hooks here at the very bottom as well. And just look how wide those tires are. But enjoy this view because this is most likely the last time you guys will see this truck, I guess, in stock form from the front end. Now coming around the side here, we've got 35s wrapped around 18 inch wheels in the front and in the rear. If you're wondering, the width is 325 millimeters. And then we've got the Bilstein shocks here. You guys can, well, partially see it. Not a lot to see there on the front end, but if we pop to the rear, you can see things quite a bit better. You can see active terrain dynamics says T-Rex on it. Looks really cool. These shocks do great. And then something that's cool about the T-Rex is it has five link coil suspension, which helps out immensely off road because it basically makes everything a lot smoother from a ride quality perspective. The back end doesn't dance all over the place, like what you get with the Raptor, for example. But anyways, other than that, we've got the beadlock capable wheels off-road side steps as well and let's head to the back well since this is my truck boom pop that out hmm well literally popping into the bed here we have a payload capacity of 1034 pounds so this bad boy can barely hold me up just kidding i don't weigh anywhere near that uh, but anyways i've got the tire carrier here in the back Notice we got the led cargo light that is not blocked by the ram bar there got the mopar lights that i've added Obviously, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm going to throw two more up there. Spray and bed liner. We've got LED bed lights as well. And then got the cargo sliders. And look how easy that is. That's actually really nice. So, like, put that down and then with the tailgate and getting in is actually pretty easy, pretty decent. But anyways, throwing this bad boy back up. Towing capacity is about 8,000 pounds roughly. More parking sensors on the back end as well. And then we've got the giant LED lights here in the back. More marker lights right there. And then more fake venting. Yes, the T-Rex is full of fake venting. But that venting in the front though, that ain't fake. Now this is one of my favorite parts about the T-Rex and that's the fact that the door panel in the back is just as nice as the front. So like with mine, Tons of really nice leather and red contrasted stitching, carbon fiber, and then Alcantar because I paid way too much for silly options. Harmony Carden sound system, that's worth it though. And then here are the seats in the back, so full leather, got the red accenting right there. And then rubber floor mats, got the ice buckets, and then under seat storage. And then these seats do have the recline function. And then also got some cup holders, more carbon fiber, heated cooled seats back here, USBs outlets all that kind of stuff and bullet holders as well which is pretty cool more storage space and even perforated leather and alcantara here on the back of the seat which is definitely nice and well that's all for the back also i've never taken the tag off but at the same time i also like don't have any friends and nobody ever sits in the passenger seat so like why would i now here's a door panel on the front same thing as in the rear material wise and then you've got this for the power folding mirror function and then i love the accenting there on the top speaker the bottom speaker not as cool i've got the smaller mirrors you can get trailer mirrors though and then notice we've got the front seats here full leather again got the power adjustments and then we've got the pedals down below power adjustable pedals we've got the parking brake all the light controls right there i just leave it in auto mode steering wheel is manually adjustable which is kind of sad but that's all before we pop in
Going over things in the interior, notice we've got Alcantara at the top and at the bottom of the steering wheel, which is really nice placement because you've got leather where you're actually gonna grab it and leather just lasts longer than Alcantara when you touch it a lot. Anyways, red stitching there. We've got adaptive cruise control and works great. Voice commands, controls for the center stack, these paddles, which I didn't like at first, but now I've gotten used to them and well, they're pretty nice. Radio controls on the back of the steering wheel, which is why the paddles are shaped so funny. And then you've got that turn signal slash windshield wiper stock, and that's all. Now popping here into the center, we've got the analog gauges for the speed and the RPMs, but we've got that screen there in the center. Now this might be a little bit controversial to some people, but I keep the PSI pretty low. I like having a smoother ride quality. Makes the tires wear faster, but you know, I'd rather have the smoother ride quality than tires that last longer, because you know, tires are expensive, but they're not too expensive. Uh, but anyways, other than that, you can see stuff like off-road, for example, here with that, which is pretty cool, especially the wheel articulation. Uh, but yeah, pretty much has all the same stuff that the other Rams have. And yeah, that's all for the center. Oh, also notice 73 miles of range. And look at the uh, fuel gauge right there where I'm at. Let's see what my average fuel economy has been. I'm guessing like nine, 8.2. I was off, but yeah. Now I've got the whole 12 inch display right here, which the first thing we're gonna do is pop it into reverse. If you guys can see the camera system, you guys can hear the parking sensors right there. Notice we can see a little bit of green because the truck is bright green, but you guys can see the different camera views right there with that. And then you can even, well, there we go. You can even zoom in as well. Now, aside from that, the other thing I wanna mention with the camera is when you press forward camera right here, then it actually gives you tire marks, which is, Definitely a cool little feature. Now being the TRX, this has all the different drive modes that come with it. Now you can change them via this thing right here or you can use the touch screen. And then you guys can see all the different drive modes here. I mostly drive in auto and then I'll do sport occasionally. If I do the sport, then I'll turn the trash control all the way off, which you do by holding down the stability control. And then the Baja mode, unlike the Raptor, works great off-road. Uh, it's actually really good with managing the transmission from a gear shift perspective and all that. Uh, so I actually use it. My Raptor, I actually took it off-road in the sport mode because it did better, believe it or not. This, the Baja mode actually does really good. And then we've got the performance pages that come with all of like the performance vehicles from, uh, we'll just say Chrysler, even though this is a Ram, but you guys get the general trend right there. And also, this takes forever to load up. Everything else loads up pretty much instantaneous, but the performance pages always take forever to load up. And yeah, it is what it is. Notice our last zero to 60, 9.9 seconds, but our best 4.3 seconds. So yeah, the zero to 60 is all over the place of the truck depending on uh, conditions and all that uh, kind of stuff. But the truck feels fast all the time, but got a bunch of cool stuff. Like you can do the engine, dyno, that kind of stuff, which basically shows you real time horsepower and torque. So like, if I floor it a little bit, you can see the gauge pops up. Pretty cool. The TRX does not have two wheel drive at all because well, it's a four wheel drive truck, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, notice that axle lock, launch control right there. I haven't used the off-road cruise control yet, but I probably should for a video. And then the spilly controls in that area. And then over here, trailer brakes, trailer steering, auxiliary switches, which I've got the auxiliary switch number one paired to the lights, parking sensors. And then this is kind of like the charging area because there's a wireless phone charger. You got a real shifter so that you can feel like a manly man when you are shifting into gear. Center console with Alcantara there and the leather on the side. I wish it was like switched where it was leather in the middle and then Alcantara on the sides because like when you rest your arm here, you kind of feel bad because you're sweating onto it. And yeah, also you get a plaque and I've got a pretty low VIN. My VIN number is 283. So that means I'm number 283 with uh, production, which I mean, it's not the lowest, but relatively low. And then you can see dual glove box. We've been over those a million times. Carbon fiber though. And then look at the stitching and leather all over the dash. And then there's Alcantara in the center. And then notice we have the cool camera mirror there at the top, full panoramic sunroof here. And then we have power sliding window, which I mean, pretty much every single modern truck uh, comes with, but that's all for the interior. And if you guys are wondering, MSRP on mine was like 94, almost $95,000. I pretty much got all the options I could at the uh, time of launch.
let's talk about visibility before we set off here in the TRX. So notice that we've got the heads up display there and then the visibility over the hood. And then here's visibility through both of the mirrors and then throughout the rest of the rear and let's set off. So we're of course gonna start this video with the uh, best thing possible, or I guess the driving portion. Wow, the launch control canceled out. I've never had that happen before. I kept my foot on the brake and well, you guys saw what happened. It started like rolling, which is kind of weird, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, and anyways, let's actually talk about the T-Rex. You guys know I've had this for quite some time and I've made a ton of videos on my truck, but I don't think I've ever officially done like a normal review on my truck, which is pretty uh, funny. Gonna use the paddles because I know that triggers people because they hate when I use the paddles on the T-Rex because of uh, what happened the first time we took it off-road, even though the paddle usage wasn't the first thing. And also, whenever I see a rebel, you always gotta say, peasant. Okay, anyways, continuing along. First off, with the gear shift response time in the sport mode, it is so snappy. Like just listen to that snappiness with the gear shifts and also out of first gear. It's like instantaneous with the response. And pretty much what I found is if you're manually shifting and you punch it in first gear, you've like put your foot down and then you instantly click the paddle the second you put your foot down because it's already gonna be at red line or else you're gonna bounce off a rev limiter, which isn't a bad thing because they have a safety mechanism in place that basically uh, it kind of like shuts off power, completely cuts it, which most modern cars have that. And so, yeah. And also that zero to 60 we did was absolutely horrible. My best is four three and that last one was 8.7 seconds. Um, so other than the fact that I'm a little bit embarrassed, I guess let's continue talking about how the truck drives. So from a ride quality perspective, this is one of the smoothest riding vehicles on the planet period, especially when you have the tires at lower PSI. So if you have it at what the cold recommended PSI is, which is 38, rides very smooth, but there's still like a little, like very small amount of harshness that comes through. If you have it set at lower PSI, like what I have, perfectly smooth, but the downside is the tires do wear faster. So you just have to pick your poison. Do you want to deal with a little bit of, I guess, uh, you know, lack of compliance with the ride quality to have longer tire life, or do you want to have shorter tire life and have the smoothest ride ever? Pick and choose whatever you want. And then also, if, if you guys are wondering off-road, I recommend around this PSI works great. Uh, a little bit lower is even better to be completely honest. So yeah, that is all what it is. If you guys are wondering what that beeping sound is when I go into second gear, it is the collision assistance letting me know that it is not on. And then also you can see it says traction control not on because I've turned everything off. Now, aside from that, everyone knows acceleration is crazy with this truck. That is what the TRX is all about is zero to sixties. And you literally can just destroy everything. Like I have not had a situation so far since I've owned this truck where I've been like, man, I'm not gonna be able to beat this person in a race because like it literally destroys every single car ever pretty much. I know there's cars that are faster than it, but most of the stuff on the road has no chance. And then uh, in terms of the other daily driver stuff like the safety tech, that all works great. Seats are very comfortable. I really like these leather seats. They hold you in place, they're wide, so if you're a bigger person, you'll still fit in them very comfortably. But on top of that, uh, they just have a nice softness to them that they're just really comfortable over long road trips and how they have everything set up, just perfect uh, for long road trips. And I've mentioned that in previous videos. Now, let's sum things up by comparing this to the Raptor. Now, I'm gonna make some quick comparisons to the Gen 2, and then we'll get into the Gen 3 because I know everyone wants to hear about that. So compared to the Gen 2, this truck rides smoother, it's significantly quicker, gets way worse fuel economy. Off-road, it is just as capable, and it actually soaks things up better than the Gen 2. The shocks, pretty similar. Now, obviously, everyone kind of seems to like the Fox shocks a little bit more. From my experience with owning both of them, they both absorb things about the same, but the biggest difference is not the shocks, it's actually the suspension. The Gen 2 styles leaf springs, this has five link coil suspension, so it just feels so much smoother, way more compliant when you're going at high speeds, whereas the Gen 2 kind of bounces around with the back end. Now with the new Gen 3 Raptor, that one is going to have five link coil suspension, just like this. And see, that person just like tried, no chance. Sorry, Xterra, but anyways, 
This is going to have, or sorry, the Gen 3 is gonna have five link coil suspension just like this. So it's gonna be a lot more compliant. And what I would basically say is if you want the ultimate on-road truck that has off-road stuff, TRX. But if you want something that's gonna be a little bit more capable off-road, the Gen 3 Raptor is just gonna be a little bit better because of the lighter weight and because it has all of the same shock and suspension technology that this has. It'll have the coil suspension. It'll have really good Fox shocks. Obviously this has Bilstein, but both of the shocks are pretty much just as advanced. And so it'll just depend on what you're looking for. Uh, but overall, is the TRX worth its, you know, $70,000 base price or it's six figure, pretty much fully loaded price. And obviously dealers have markup on it. And I would say 100%, I still stand behind that. This is by far the best vehicle I've ever owned. It's just so fun. Every single time I get in it, I'm excited. Unless I'm at the gas station, less so. Uh, that's a really cool G-Wagon by the way. Um, but yeah, it's just such an exciting vehicle. I have fun with it on road and then I have tons of fun off road and I, I've just never had a vehicle that I've wanted to keep like this. Every single time I've owned a vehicle, and you guys know this, I always end up wanting to trade out of it after like six months after a year. I've had this since February of this year, so I've had it for just about six months, which is usually when I start to kind of get an inkling of a feeling where I'm like, you know what? I don't think I really want this anymore. I don't have that with the TRX whatsoever. Like this vehicle still makes me excited every single day that I look at it and drive it. And so, yeah, I think that that says everything about this truck. And so is it better than a Gen 2 Raptor? 100%. Is it worth it? 100%. Is it better than a Gen 3 on road? it will for sure be because of the power and the acceleration and the sound but off-road i think that gen 3 is just going to have a little bit of an edge and of course we'll see that when we do the full comparison but hopefully you guys enjoyed this review because i had nothing better to do on a sunday and i'll see you guys